In image compositing, alpha and transparency have to do with having certain parts of a bitmap image, which of course has to be rectangular, interpreted as either fully or partially transparent, allowing pixel colors from other images to be visible in their place. Before we get into some details behind how alpha channels work, let's quickly just discuss the difference between alpha and transparency, as they are not the same thing and frequently confused. While alpha and transparency can have the same effect on an image, a transparency channel is a specific type of data with one relationship to the image. It only affects the opacity of pixels and nothing else. The PNG file format is commonly used to store images with transparent pixels. In this case, an additional color channel is added to the image, either an extra 8 or 16 bits, depending on the color depth of the image, and this is used to store the transparency information. This is not an alpha channel, however, because the PNG format doesn't support arbitrary alpha channels. And we can see this when opening a PNG with transparency in Photoshop. Right, we can see the transparency here, but when we go and look at the channels for the image, there is no alpha channel. Alpha, on the other hand, while usually used to render certain pixels transparent, can represent really any type of data. Most importantly, when working with a file format that supports alpha, multiple alpha channels can be stored, which is not true of the single transparency channel which can be stored in a PNG image. The TIFF and Targa file formats are commonly chosen to store images with alpha channels. Before we get into how alpha information is interpreted, let's just discuss the over operation, which is one of the most common operations performed in compositing. Now the effect here is essentially what happens when using the normal blend mode in Photoshop and could otherwise be called alpha blending. With the over operation, opaque pixels occlude pixels beneath them. Any semi or fully transparent pixels, of course, allow pixels beneath to be visible. This is accomplished by the following equation. So first we calculate the alpha of the final pixel value that we're trying to figure out here, uh, and that will be equal to the alpha of the uh, pixel coming from image A, and then we'll add to that the alpha of uh, the pixel from image B uh, times 1 minus the alpha of, fr from image A. And in, in most situations, this will probably sum to 1, uh, but this is uh, you know calculated just in case it doesn't sum to 1, right? Because that's totally possible as well to end up with uh, still a semi-transparent pixel. And then with that value calculated, We'll calculate the actual uh, RGB color values for uh, the pixel itself. So this will be uh, computed. This this equation will be computed for each color channel. And all we're doing is we can we can think of these uh, multiplications here as really just scaling the uh, color from uh, the the pixel from image A, just scaling that uh, color by its alpha value uh, to basically take a portion of it, right? Because you know, that, that color value isn't contributing 100% to the final pixel. Uh, it's, only, it's only contributing a little bit. So we, we, we start by scaling it down by its alpha value and then add to that, of course, the scaled down version from, the, uh, from image B or the image underneath. Um, again, very frequently this, uh, this image is going to be fully opaque, but in case it isn't, uh, we'll still get that taken into account multiply by one minus uh, the alpha of image A, and then divide the whole thing by, of course, the final alpha value for the, the final uh, pixel that we previously calculated. Right, so the key takeaway here is the fact that this scaling operation is taking place on uh, really both, the, both image A and image B, uh, but again, you know, as I said, uh, in, in many cases, image B is fully opaque. So if you want a really simple example to keep in the back of your mind, you can think about the, the about uh, pixel B being fully opaque, and then just think about uh, pixel A being you know scaled down to a smaller value, a smaller color value for each color channel, uh, so that it can be successfully added to the color value from pixel B, 
uh, without uh, summing to a to to an inappropriate uh, value and 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 artificially increasing the brightness of the pixel, right? And of course, this is accomplished by the fact that that second term there, the color from from image B multiplied by its alpha value, is also multiplied by one minus the the alpha value from pixel A so that this summing can be performed correctly, again, without artificially increasing the brightness of an individual pixel value. An image with an alpha channel will be stored with either straight alpha or pre-multiplied alpha. Now, neither is an incorrect way of storing imagery, but a technical understanding of the differences between these two methods is essential for correctly interpreting files in compositing applications. So with straight alpha, the RGB components of the image remain unaltered and really no consideration is made for which areas of the image are transparent, uh, semi-transparent, or opaque. With, with straight alpha, the alpha channel is just included with the red, green, and blue channels, but that's pretty much it. The compositing software is going to have to take care of the remainder of the process involving, of course, that, that scaling of the RGB components in preparation for alpha blending. Now with pre-multiplied alpha, on the other hand, part of the alpha blending process is applied to the RGB channels themselves and actually stored in the image itself. So with this method, the RGB values for each pixel are, as the name suggests, multiplied with the alpha value effectively scaling them down in preparation for an over operation. Multiplying by pure black areas, uh, of course coming from the alpha channel, will well result in black pixels, right? If you, if you multiply anything by zero, uh, if you multiply any of your red, green, and blue channels by the, uh, you know, red, the red, green, and blue values of 000, zero, zero for uh, the color black, you are going to get just uh, just zeros uh, across the board, right? So, so that will convert uh, any, any RGB value to just black. If we multiply by a grayscale value, right, the effect is simply going to be really to darken the, the pixel color. But, but in effect, what's happening here is we're, we're performing that scaling operation and, and, and scaling down the intensity of those pixel values so that later when they are added to other pixel values to do an, an over operation, or in other words, alpha blending, that they'll appear correctly. Now, incorrectly interpreting straight alpha as pre-multiplied will cause the compositing software to fail to perform the RGB scaling that it should be doing. So in the case that the underlying layer is fully opaque, well, semi-transparent areas will appear to be solid fills. And many pixel values, after the addition process of the over operation, will be values over one and get clamped to white. So if you're getting nasty artifacts like this in the semi-transparent areas of an image or image sequence, well, it could have to do with interpreting straight alpha incorrectly as pre-multiplied alpha. Incorrectly interpreting pre-multiplied alpha as straight alpha will cause an additional multiplication to be performed on the RGB channels, unnaturally darkening the semi-transparent areas. And of course, this should make sense, right? If you take those semi-transparent areas, multiply them again by some grayscale value, you're just going to uh, darken the pixel colors even more. You're going to scale down their intensities even more. So with all this in mind, just be aware of what type of image or image sequence or footage you're working with and ensure that your compositing software is interpreting the file correctly.